Uh, thank you for the nice introduction and also for inviting us to do this. Uh, we're very excited to talk about it. I'm Data and my colleague Mariam, as it was uh, introduced. Um, so, uh, yeah, first, let's just, you know, to address the general thing is like it would have been wonderful to do it differently and talk about this in the museum space, but we all know the situation is. Uh, very hard in the world and it's not a possibility for the moment but yeah at least we have this possibility to talk like this which is a little bit of you know um, a challenging format for this but you know we'll try to keep it and we prepared the presentation which uh, gives some visual material and hopefully one day you can visit at Tbilisi and visit us at the museum. Um, and we hope this, this can happen soon. Uh, we also shared uh, with you the virtual reality tour of the museum that we recently made. So uh, maybe you already had a look and have some understanding uh, how uh, the space looks like, at least in the virtual reality, but yeah, physical experience is also something very different. Uh, we, yeah, so when initially uh, we were asked to talk about textile and politics uh, and in connection with the museum, we started to think what could be the directions that we could outline and talk about. And uh, since uh, Silk Museum on the one hand uh, is a very active museum that you know preserves its rich history and a lot of uh, activities uh, connected to the museum life. Uh, it also, on the other hand, uh, became a space that uses it uh, uses its experience to uh, interpret uh, various topics through contemporary art and collaborate with a lot of people. So this uh, creates a very unique moment and a very interesting way of uh, continuing uh, uh, our work. And this is what we will be talking about today. In the beginning, we'll make a little bit of introduction, history and overview about the museum, its collections, uh, the spaces. And then we will talk about a few uh, projects that we collaborated on or hosted on uh, that uh, for us connects to the museum and also shows a lot of different ways how you know like what social and political topics can emerge and uh, we can talk about through uh, silk but not only material itself necessarily but also a lot of things that are connected to its uh, production and as we will go so because of this reason uh, we would like to talk about textile more as a medium and focus on its presence in a more anthropological sense and see it in relation to human experience in time so perhaps now it's good to talk a little bit about the history of the museum yeah hello everyone uh, and I just um, need to continue like that. Uh, this is the archival um, photo uh, from uh, like, and you see the museum facade here. And uh, as Nelly mentioned, the museum found it in 1887 and it was a part of the Caucasian sericulture station. Um, it was founded by Nikolai Shavrov, as you hear um, several seconds ago. And uh, he was a scientist and biologist and he traveled a lot in Europe and used this uh, um, European experience, let's say, to develop sericulture in the Caucasian region and um, the museum building itself was the main administrative building of the complex uh, and this whole complex was uh, located in Mushtaidi Park uh, and there we are uh, 23 different buildings with various functions uh, and um, you, you know there were uh, some uh, laboratories uh, like a dying laboratory photo laboratory and uh, all of these uh, Mm, laboratories were functioning for developing the um, sericulture in the region uh, and uh, the uh, station has the educational uh, role uh, and they have some practical uh, activities uh, and also researching laboratory uh, mm, you know different uh, experiments uh, dedicated to the uh, silk production mm, and uh, yeah mm, the mm, architect of the building and I just want to uh, go to this uh, contemporary image uh, of the museum as you see it did not change a lot and the architect of the building was Polish Aleksandr Szymkiewicz. Uh, he was actually one of the famous architects who had an important role to shape Tbilisi uh, 19th century architecture let's say and um, 
as you uh, might be uh, mentioned that uh, the building itself um, combines uh, different uh, like let's say ar uh, eclectic architectural style uh, it combines uh, so-called russian style gothic style and also um, some of the elements of islamic arts uh, and uh, it's also remarkable to mention that uh, in the interior design of the building there are some uh, details related to the sericulture as you see in the picture some butterflies silkworms and uh, the building itself has the cultural monument status since uh, 2006 so and here we are this is the permanent exhibition hall and as you see these are old cabinets so also designed by the architect and um, as uh, as as you see, uh, there are uh, lots of uh, different exponents inside the cabinets, and uh, there are actually uh, 40,000 uh, exponents from 50 different countries. And uh, these are the exponents who, who uh, which collected from the expeditions, um, let's say in 1880s. Um, and uh, this is the library uh, hall, which was originally uh, originally. Um, uh, was uh, like out from the authentic time uh, when the museum built uh, there was this library as well and the book fund is very rich uh, we have uh, 20,000 different books and also periodicals encyclopedies uh, dictionaries and all of these are uh, the like about the sericulture for sure uh, but uh, some other fields of natural science and uh, yeah as you see the furniture is also from the original time and uh, here are some highlights uh, from our diverse collection and uh, these uh, some of them are like photo collection containers and uh, actually these are um, all different uh, thematics but all uh, all of them are related to silk production uh, but it's interesting to mention that the variety of uh, the collection gives us useful knowledge about uh, silk history from the past. They also give us an endless um, inspiration to make some connections uh, and uh, reflections and interpretation with history. The uh, logic, um, order, and an authentic uh, scientific structure of the museum uh, space and display is valuable and delicately touchable to continue experiments uh, in a creative way. Uh, searching for metaphors, uh, finding alternatives, creating contemporary storytelling in a creative way. Uh, mm, and uh, this gives uh, the museum possibility to function not only as a traditional institution, but also as a creative platform, uh, which is open for uh, new ideas and experiments. It is also interesting to mention that this uh, institution faced a lot of difficulties um, and controversial situations. Uh, what we, uh, uh, when we talk about the sericulture station, uh, the complex um, was active and worked uh, actually uh, until World War I. And then uh, in Soviet time, it returned its function as a research institute. And uh, at some point, it was also um, uh, like um, um, under the control of the uh, Agricultural Institute. And uh, during the urban development in the area, uh, in the 60s, the various buildings of the establishment started to gradually disappear. And unfortunately, only the uh, museum building and the former staff house is uh, existing now, but the staff house is privatized. Uh, but luckily, uh, during these controversial times, uh, the museum survived uh, without losing its identity. So. Yeah, if uh, you're interested to learn more about particular collections, uh, we encourage you to do this virtual tour that we made where we've provided the pins that give a little bit, I mean, that give information about the collections actually, and it's uh, publicly available on the internet for anyone who is interested and will be listening uh, to this lecture. The image that you see here, you will not find, um, during that virtual tour because it's from the uh, collection uh, room of the museum, uh, but you'll find a, a lot of uh, information and 
possibilities to explore the space yourself from home from the computer uh, yeah so uh, to to continue uh, we uh, I mean because we have uh, quite an international audience, as we understand. So uh, to give a little bit of also a historical overview uh, of the situation and uh, also some happenings uh, connected to the museum that you know uh, led to its uh, current state, uh, is that the uh, silk uh, making uh, has a very rich uh, history in Georgia. Uh, in the 20th century, silk production on an industrial level was very active during the Soviet times. And uh, a lot of people across the country bred silkworms and sold cocoons to the industry. Uh, and there were uh, two rather large uh, silk factories uh, in Tbilisi, in the capital. Uh, however, in the 90s, uh, which uh, came with a lot of difficulties and economical crisis, uh, a lot of industries, including that of silk, started to disappear. And it is also said that, you know, the industrial tools, uh, they were more profitable as scrap metal than, you know, what they did. So because of that situation today, uh, despite all these rich uh, traditions, Georgia doesn't have uh, silk production on an industrial level. Uh, the research about sericulture continues in the academic spheres and the museum keeps uh, the uh, rich history about uh, this and all the other processes related to that. But uh, yeah, that is the situation uh, that, you know, there is no silk production that could find connection to this somehow. Uh, then, uh, uh, in, with regards of like uh, on the background of this, like with regards of the museum's life and uh, uh, it turning into a museum that it is today, uh, in the 90s and early 2000s, uh, in 1997 and 2005, a uh, Georgian textile group, GTG, got engaged with the space and organized five uh, biennial international symposiums about textile in collaboration with the European Textile Network. So uh, this uh, helped somehow, you know, uh, and gave an opportunity to open up the space for public and, uh, you know, support the knowledge that was there and uh, to support the Silk Museum and making of the Silk Museum. Gradually, the Agricultural Institute uh, uh, left uh, the building and it became uh, a museum under the Ministry of uh, Culture now of Georgia. Uh, so, uh, as we said, uh, while, you know, developing it as a Silk Museum and working on, you know, preserving its knowledge, educational activities, it also started uh, from an early stage uh, to collaborate with a lot of local and international uh, art uh, professionals and uh, uh, then um, uh, the reason for that actually is that uh, silk and generally sericulture which is the core uh, of the museum is a very wide discipline uh, that can find uh, you know connections to various fields and topics and it became a reference point or inspiration for a lot of artists and curators who work there so on this image here you see uh, one of the uh, image from one of the exhibition uh, by Nino Krivishvili, and Mariam will tell about this project uh, later into more detail, uh, but also uh, uh, there's uh, another image that we wanted to uh, show, which is from uh, another group exhibition called the Museum of Transformation. Uh, and what we would like to highlight is that uh, when we are working on, uh, uh, we're working in this direction and to you know like rethink and find connection on a conceptual on a, on a very direct level through contemporary art uh it's always important for us to think uh what role we as a museum and as a cultural institution can have uh, and to what extent you know like uh, we can present and talk about the things and this finds uh uh connection to a lot of a lot of topics, uh, which is textile, silk making, as well as uh, the city and our direct surrounding, which is what I'd like to talk about now through one project. Uh, so uh, the uh, Caucasian Sericulture Station that had uh, multiple buildings in the area, um, as Mariam explained, you know, gradually started to uh, disappear and with as many buildings started to disappear and the urban fabric uh, was changing a lot uh, in this part of the city. And uh, with this understanding, we worked on the festival uh, in 2018 called Memory Threads Museum and Neighborhood, which was 
a part of a larger um, festival within Art Prospect Project, Support Arts Link. Um, and uh, the festival had a lot of different uh, works and events that happened within the museum building in its outer spaces, as well as in the neighborhood uh, and in public, as well as private spaces uh, at some point. Uh, with To go like a little bit to the uh, concept of the festival and what it addressed was the relationship of museums and neighborhoods. And in this particular case, it's this various historical layers that the Silk Museum has with its neighborhood, but it's not very visible unless, you know, you try to uh, find this story and, you know, like uh, try to imagine and locate in your imagination what was uh, going on there. Uh, the, uh, about the, uh, so uh, I think we have a map of the station or actually part of the uh, Caucasian Sericulture Station's map. So you can see, uh, the one with number one uh, is uh, where the Silk Museum is uh, and which was the main building of the station. And it's uh, located uh, close to the Ntkwari River and the Mushtaid Garden, which uh, was there uh, already when the station was established. And the reason for establishing the station there was due to several factors. One of them was uh, of course, the silk uh, uh, traditions uh, in the Caucasus, in Georgia as well, and uh, also the location of Tbilisi within the region, but also proximity to the river, the fact that there was already a garden there, uh, as well as uh, the uh, fact that mulberry trees are endemic to the area, and mulberry trees is something that is a vital part of uh, silk production generally. So here, this is a panoramic view, uh, 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 panoramic view where you can also see the museum and a little bit of the city and our area. And uh, it's actually uh, taken from my apartment. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, Tbilisi itself is a, quite a divided city with the river. So there, oftentimes when we refer to the city, we talk about the right side of the river on the left side and we happen to be on the left side so on this picture on the very right side you can see the museum building you can actually see its roof uh, sunk uh, in the trees under the round stadium uh, uh, structure and on one side it is bordered with a, a historical district that was constructed mostly in the 19th century and uh, uh, behind uh, so towards uh, where you see the view uh, is an area where a lot of uh, it was mostly an industrial area during the soviet time and uh, today it's rather post-industrial because a lot of those uh, you know, the factories don't work uh, uh, as they uh, used to be. Um, so uh, this uh, fact was, uh, is something that were, came up in a project and an artistic uh, tour that we want to talk about uh, and that is connected to the mulberry trees. So a history of a part of the city, of our micro district, so to say, uh, that is told through the trees. Uh, as said, mulberry trees, uh, their leaves are, are the only thing that the domesticated silkworms would eat to give us silk. Uh, fruits is something that we uh, humans enjoy uh, from mulberry trees. Uh, and uh, there's also a special uh, room at the museum dedicated to the mulberry tree, uh, where you can see a section from it with an intervention by Ona Dirker that shows uh, the images uh, of mulberry trees in the neighborhood. There were also three nurseries as part of the station's work where they, uh, you know, like uh, worked on uh, development of mulberry trees and what would be uh, you know, better options for silk production. And, uh, but these nurseries uh, also don't exist anymore. Ona Dirker, together with a group of artists, was working with the museum throughout 2014 and 2018 uh, about the topic of mulberry trees and the history of the station in the neighborhood. And uh, they uh, did various activities uh, in the framework uh, of this collaboration. Uh, and uh, something is falling down in my room. I'm sorry. Um, I have made a little accident. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, um, so going back to the mulberry tree. Okay, that's fine. We're safe. 
Sorry about this. Uh, so what was I saying? The mulberry trees. So based on this knowledge and experience. breaking into your, your house data. <laughs> no, 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 just, just the shelf uh, kind of fell down or something, but it's fine, it's safe. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, based on this knowledge, uh, uh, Ono Dilker was invited to collaborate uh, with local artist Elena Gabrichidze to, uh, um, and they developed, it, it was in the framework of the festival, and they developed uh, an artistic tour that is called Mulberry Slow Race, the image of which uh, you see uh, here on this image. And uh, they, well, they did the tour and an accompanying publication. Again, it's a very different uh, experience uh, to do the tour on site and we encourage everyone to do it. But here we have decided to integrate uh, some parts from the publication and also uh, from the photo documentation of the artistic tour to talk about uh, you know, the history uh, that is told through the mulberry trees and what it tells about the city today. Uh, here I'd like to, so the, in the beginning of the publication we find introduction and this history of the station and how the change of power was influencing the development uh, of this research uh, institute, but also uh, the uh, area that it was occupying. And I'd like to refer to one paragraph from this introduction, which you can follow on the text, which uh, reads as follows. Our case now focuses on the remains of the research complex, as well as on the current state of the area outside the walls of this museum. The walk which this publication presents is an exploration of the former territory of this renowned place. It is a slow race, given the time span of successive developments that came together and perhaps history become somewhat visible during the walk. In this artistic tour, fragments of history, different material and experiences offer subjective encounters with various layers of the area. It will lead you along some trees from the Mulberry family in the neighborhood to places that reveal something about its history. With a little bit of imagination, you could consider this walk to be a time travel. So let's try to imagine how this works as a time travel and <laughs> refer to some parts of the tour. Uh, this is a map, how it follows uh, uh, certain mulberry trees as stage. Some sound is coming. Yeah. I, I thought he was coming from your... Oh, hey, then. It's Georgian, Georgian speaking, yeah. but I don't uh, know who... Yeah, it was from one of our uh, researcher, Anna. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's Georgian. She's from Sibiri as well. Okay. Okay. Um, I've just yeah, written but... it. It's fine. Don't worry. Okay. So back back to the tour. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, here you see like each tree is some kind of like a station where you stop and learn about uh, particularities of the area and also about the trees. Um, and it follows, it starts in front of the museum, but it starts uh, at a mulberry tree. And then it goes across the street to the um, neighboring house, which is uh, also was part of the station, uh, employee's house that Maria mentioned, which today is in uh, private ownership uh, of apartment uh, of apartments. And uh, it's altered, but you can, I mean, it still finds resemblance with its original form from the archival photos. And if you pay attention, you can find that there is similarity between the two buildings. Uh, but these are the only two buildings that remain uh, from the station. So afterwards it goes to, uh, the Mushtaid Garden, um, where we learn a lot about the story, uh, stories, histories, and legends that are associated uh, with uh, the garden. Um, I think we have some photos of that. Or... Oh, so uh, close to the uh, movement theater, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, movement yeah. theater is also in the Bastiani, neighborhood. And the nightclub Bastiani is just in front of that, isn't it? It's it's all one neighborhood, basically, yeah. <laughs> okay, because we had a presentation from Bastiani is a nightclub, and we had a presentation from the movement theater as well. So we were supposed so, to do all of that. We had a, a, also a visit with an iPhone 
around CBD around these areas. We actually worked through this park before. Mm. That's <laughs> nice. That, that's that's good. And so we are basically in between the two. Uh, so if you had come, you would basically be in the same area most of the time if you visited these places. Uh, then uh, with the tour, like during the tour, uh, it also went up to uh, the residential building that you can actually see on the back uh, in the back of this photo, and it overlooked uh, basically the panoramic view that we had before. Uh, that. Uh, uh, was a good bird eye perspective on the area where the station used to be and sort of like a good possibility to see during the tour how it was from above or how it is from above and imagine the map on the area and then uh, you know like go down again walk through the park and go out uh, to the sidewalk where uh, the uh, mulberry trees are you also see a lot of mulberry trees but not on the sidewalk itself but actually on the street uh, next to the sidewalk. And here you see Ono and Elena leading the tour. Uh, and then, for instance, it also went to uh, the building that is on this territory where internally displaced persons from Abkhazia were temporarily settled in uh, for some time already, quite some time ago, actually. And it went uh, through the vegetable gardens that the people living there have developed in the area where once the you know stations establishment and the mulberry tree nurseries were so it sort of like gives this as it is from this publication you know uh, you get an image of vegetable gardens but also you know the archival sense of how it was developing so it's this way of imagining how the um, you know like space has been changing but also to uh, encounter it as it is today um yeah and then uh, afterwards it uh, goes uh, i think we have another image from the tour after this and oh, sorry. Yeah. and then we uh, uh the tour ends in the neighborhood um yeah i think i got it yeah I, okay uh, sorry, the tour ends uh, in the neighborhood, uh, in, basically in the yards of uh, the residential yards where you find a lot of mulberry trees and it suggests you to sit and listen to the wind uh, which uh, has distributed these mulberry trees in, uh, in the district and in our micro district as we can call it or the mulberry district if we want to use this term but what's interesting is that you know like you are uh, it's very present through these trees the history of the place there but unless you uh know the specific history and you try to uh you know or you find it through the museum then you start to think about them very differently but they're also great because they give fruits and people are enjoying them uh, during the summer uh but like uh what's important in uh, today's discussion here is that when we follow the trees and the station's uh, history, it reveals, of course, more than just uh, the uh, flora of one neighborhood. And uh, if we delve into the history of the station through the museum's material and connecting it to the remaining trees, suddenly it also shows the changes of this part of the city and um, how once a big establishment that was to support the textile industry has merged in it. Uh, they also tell a story of appropriating spaces and using public spaces, uh, which together with many trees in this city have been disappearing and becoming less uh, and causing a lot of uh, urban contestation. Um, uh, that connects to you know how rapid modernization as it were uh, can erase traces that we yet have to find and uh, uh, locate uh, them in the history of the city that uh, we inhabit uh, so this is you know again uh, one part of uh, the silk production which is very different from thinking about the textile but is the tree that is connected to making this textile and shows this complex history. So now we can go to the textiles uh, themselves yeah. and the yeah, yeah. big project. So the next project which we would like to talk about is the uh, art intervention at the museum. And uh, this is one of the first long-term project which was um, 
aimed to develop contemporary art initiatives at the museum. And it was organized in 2016, 2017, and uh, managed by a cultural and management uh, lab and uh, financed uh, by Swiss Cooperation Office for the South Caucasus. Um, the uh, main aim of this project, like uh, the whole big project of the art intervention at the museum, uh, was to collaborate with local artists and curators and uh, our main question um, and challenge was to connect historical memory uh, with the, to the modern day. And um, for this reason, we were interested uh, to collaborate with the uh, artists and curators. And uh, it was our main aim was to uh, give them possibilities to use museum space to develop their own uh, artistic perspectives, artistic ideas, but uh, connect somehow with the specificity of the museum itself. And uh, what does an artistic uh, intervention uh, at the museum imply? This was the main question uh, and uh, that was project actually seek to explore. And as we see in our previous examples, artists are uh, mostly influenced by particular aspects of the museum's history. And in this uh, process of shaping artistic ideas and inspirations, it is always uh, interesting to observe how the individual uh, creative perception reflects on the story of the museum as an institution that changed uh, changed its function uh, in time. And during art intervention, we hosted four different groups uh, consisting of artists and curators. And um, each of the project um, had uh, the, a research component uh, with the residency space at the museum. And at the final stage, uh, we uh, organized temporary exhibitions as well. Uh, and uh, in general, we can say that this project helped museum a lot to um, develop um, uh, the field of uh, contemporary art uh, in the museum space and to increase uh, different audience. Um, and uh, it's also helped museum to start developing its role as a mediator between uh, larger groups of society. So the uh, project which we are uh, looking uh, at the poster uh, now, it's the first project from this art intervention series uh, by textile artist Nino Krivishvili and curator Irena Popiashvili. Uh, during the project, Nino Krivishvili focused on the topic of solid textile um, as a materialized remnant uh, from the recent past of the Georgia's history, and uh, as well as aesthetic phenomen, uh, phenomenon still preserved in older generations folk memory. During her two months residency, Nino Krivishvili was uh, working in the attic of the museum space, and this is one of the photo of her uh, working process, uh, as you see, and uh, we have also the final artwork in the, how it looks in the, uh, from the exhibition. Uh, this uh, this image is from the exhibition actually and uh, it's interesting that uh, she was uh, the artist was uh, particularly inspired by the um, industrial soviet fra fabrics from the museum's textile collect collection uh, which uh, was produced uh, in uh, late 80s and here you can see these um, images from the soviet time textile samples uh, and uh, if you uh, observe um, you might see the similarity uh, um, with the design, it, it has uh, obviously it has the different um, patterns using some different ge geometrical forms, but still it uh, creates an so, uh, let's say a design which was very uh, recognizable and it's like Soviet uh, style, let's say, and. Um, uh, Nino Krivish really uh, tried not uh, um, not only to use these images, but uh, to emphasize with these images actually, and to evoke visitors who had this memory as well of, of from the Soviet time. And uh, yeah, this is the image from the exhibition. And uh, yeah. Uh, uh, as we can see in this case, textile as an uh, aesthetic product also reflects on social demand on a particular time frame. Uh, and it's interesting to mention that in her uh, research, Nino Krivish really tried not only to reinterpret textile as material product, but as a symbol of collective memory. And uh, she also tried to connect urban transformation of the city to her research topic. Uh, actually, these are the photos uh, from 
uh, like photo documentations and uh, what the artist tried uh, that she uh, um, she uh, identified the exact places of the former textile shops and uh, marked them with her exhibition posters, uh, as you see. Uh, and uh, as Data mentioned, this uh, fact somehow accentuated this fast modernization of the city, which has uh, happened in uh, Tbilisi uh, recently. And um, yeah, sometimes the, this banner somehow accentuated the current careless attitudes towards our recent past. Uh, which is usually preferred to destroy or to hide somehow. Uh, and such an inappropriate solution of the urban space became important for a uh, fact for Nino Krivishvili. Uh, and uh, in also, in general, we can say that in, collabor in collaboration with curator Irena Popiashvili, Nino Krivishvili tried to um, try to represent the historical fact of producing textiles from the distance of time and from the artistic perspective. Uh, she combined the textiles uh, with unused secondary uh, objects from the museum and created new works. And uh, these uh, artworks try to reflect collective memory and to connect two important places of the city. And uh, uh, this idea was declared um, in the exhibition title uh, as well, uh, like Soviet rainbow from the textile shop to museum. And yeah, here you see also some of the uh, photos from her exhibition uh, in 2016. Uh, right. Shall I continue with the other projects then? Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when we talk about uh, you know uh, researching and working around silk industry and the textiles during the Soviet times, uh, it uh, reveals a number of topics, which is you know its memory in the everyday, but also in the collective, uh, and it's uh, also the topics such as gender and labor and uh, many many more that you know like can be reflected upon and can be interpreted artistically very differently. So uh, that uh, time period and the research and uh, of uh, silk industry and production. Uh, in Georgia was the topic uh, that uh, uh, Tatiana Fyodorova, artist from Moldova, worked on during her residency at the museum in 2018. And uh, she also uh, worked uh, and did a summer school uh, together with uh, local artists uh, on the topic uh, and uh, created creation of artist books. So it was all presented at the exhibition called uh, Breathe. Um, uh, that showed the research findings and the artistic books uh, that were created. Uh, Tatiana created several artistic books under the project called Nuskoan that uh, researches and rethinks the uh, Soviet history, uh, which is generally the topic that she deals with uh, in her um, art and uh, often from a personal uh, perspective as well. And we'd like to uh, concentrate on uh, one uh, art book here, which uh, you can see here on the exhibition view, the accordion style uh, book uh, called In Search of the Body of the textile industry. Uh, the museum's uh, publication collection, as we said, includes a lot of different material and uh, it also has uh, the magazines called uh, Textile Industry. And from the covers of these magazines uh, from uh, 1930s through 1960s, uh, she collected the, the covers of those that are portraying uh, a female workers of the industry. Uh, and then they were assembled uh, in this artistic book uh, that you just saw and now we will see more uh, closer images uh, to uh, see how, how it looked like how it looks like and uh, yeah so uh, magazines and newspapers you know would often cover the stories of successful workers uh, with the smiling faces in the controversial the utopian lifestyle that the Soviet Union uh, represented and uh, it was you know as though um, 
Uh, there was uh, equality of people in labor, where class and privilege uh, were said uh, not to exist. Uh, but the reality of everyday and workers might have been the opposite, especially as people working uh, on this industry recall. And that was also a big part of the project to look at the official information, but to also do interviews with uh, the former workers of the factories in Tbilisi, some of whom can, you know, today uh, talk about what was actually happening. And uh, if we then compare the personal narratives uh, to the official information, um, we find uh, very uh, different in information behind, behind the numbers and the images. And then the covers, you know, also become somehow deceiving and this imagery and people uh, become uh, the tool that, you know, the ideology was using uh, for its propaganda. And the next picture, the picture that you saw before, yeah, we just thought to make a little break out of the exhibition space is a photo from the field work that we went uh, to the one of the former silk factories in Tbilisi, and here you see Tatiana, uh, museum's director, Nino Kuprava, Mariam, and myself. Um, so uh, just, uh, yeah, uh, we'd like to mention two uh, more artistic books that were created as part of uh, this uh, project and were presented at this exhibition. Um, uh, so, uh, next one is uh, a work by Tamar Boturashvili called Quartira, which is Russian for an apartment, and she deliberately does not translate the title to uh, make a connection to the apartment style of the certain time. To give a little bit of uh, also uh, understanding of the context is that we're talking about the time where it was said that everything had to be uh, more or less uniform. Uh, and uh, even, for instance, if we're talking about the clothing, jeans were the product of the West, you know, like where some Thing that was available on the black markets and wearing them could have been some kind of a statement as well. Um, and uh, but people oftentimes, you know, like also at the museum when they see uh, the textiles that Mariam was talking about, recall, you know, getting the stem uh, textiles with different patterns and also trying to custom make the dresses, uh, you know, within the possibilities that were that was given back then. Uh, and it, uh, you know, stays uh, as a personal end and collective memory, and sometimes even in a material form still continues to exist with us. Uh, the textiles that we were talking about, the uh, industrial silk textiles, they there were those that were used for clothing, and uh, there are also those that were used for interior decoration, which is what uh, finds connection to uh, this uh, object and artist book that Tamar worked on. And she tried to, so by opening uh, this book, uh, we find a micro world, an apartment that is reconstruction based on personal memories, uh, family photographs, and a lot of different material, including, you know, the textile in the uh, interior to emphasize the uh, interior uh, design that despite uh, intensive unification, uh, uh, it evokes memories of home and attempted individuality that was uh, created by people in it and uh, which in material form or just as a memory still exists and needs attention for rethinking this part of the history. Uh, then we go to another uh, artist book that uh, is created by Naili Vahania called Silk Factory uh, infinity sign and this is also uh, the direction how a silkworm moves so if you you know imagine like this to uh, view the cocoon around itself uh, that it transforms inside afterwards uh, 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 through researching the textile industry in Georgia from the 20th century on uh, the book also deals with the memory on a personal and collective level and she places the life stages of silkworm in parallel to silk production in Georgia from Soviet time till today. Uh, to uh, give uh, general information about the life stages of silkworm is that uh, uh, from an egg, it uh, then comes the silkworm uh, that uh, grows and then it uh, is a pupa that it is in the cocoon that it has spun around itself and then it transforms to a moth that gives egg uh, in case when you know they are let out uh, from the cocoons. Uh, what uh, Naili says in the book is that um, 
the silk production in Georgia stops at the level of a moth, uh, moth without further reproduction. And it follows these two stories um, uh, and uh, integrates material from official documents, from interviews uh, with former employees, as well as the design uh, pattern copies uh, of uh, the uh, textiles of the time that uh, you find in the museum collection uh, that Marian has mentioned. Uh, and then it comes up until a recent big achievement uh, uh, of silk in Georgia, uh, also rather ironically, uh, which is that in 2018, uh, Georgian silk uh, became an intangible cultural heritage of the country. Uh, in times when its production is uh, basically non-existent here. Uh, so uh, despite that, the long history is kept uh, with vast material that today gives us an opportunity to revisit various aspects of the history and build on this knowledge as we've been illustrating on the examples we've been talking. And there's one more we'd like to present and then we can have questions. So uh, the final case that we would like to talk uh, today uh, is the exhibition, the book uh, of patterns by visual artist Tamuna Jabashvili. This is her individual um, project based on Jabashvili's long-term long project, um, research project about the gender topics. And the museum hosted this exhibition in uh, 2016 uh, in March. Uh, and uh, she has been working on gender topics um, and expressing it through textile in her practice as well. And for example, this is one of her uh, earliest, earlier projects, Supra of her own, uh, which uh, she, she was um, actually working with the anthropologist Agnieszka Dudrak. Uh, and um, this project also concerned the topic of domestic violence uh, against women and hard, um, had uh, multiple components, including an installation and uh, uh, in a giant apartment fashioned by used tablecloths, bearing the stories that women uh, had shared. Uh, so if you're interested, you, uh, later you can uh, see the link and detailed information about that project. But for now, uh, we are uh, focusing on this exhibition, The Book of Patterns. Um, and actually this... Um, project uh, finds interesting connection to the local textile traditions and current uh, gender topics. description. Uh, taking traditional blue tablecloth as one of my reference points, I focus on the existing gap between tradition and everyday life. The patterns on the blue tablecloth tell old stories. They are attributes, the rituals active in the past. At present, the patterns carry a decorative function endlessly retailing old narratives. For me, they represent co conventional socio-cultural patterns that tend to influence and often uh, violate our lives. In order to question this role of the patterns, I deconstruct the traditional form of blue tablecloth to its components, fabrics, patterns, colors. By doing so, my attempt is to reintegrate the function and the technique charged with new content into our present, uh, present social uh, context. Uh, so, the traditional textile making in Georgia, uh, as well as in the Caucasus, includes uh, various uh, techniques. And one of them is uh, woodcut printing on fabric. And here you see the image. Uh, these are the woodcuts for textile printing from the museum's collection. And uh, as we see, Tamuna used these old techniques uh, to represent her uh, own conceptual work. And um, so, um, same technique uh, like woodcut printing was used for the uh, blue tablecloth as well. Um, and it's also interesting that Jabashvili collected uh, some images of the women's everyday lives from the internet and abstracted them into contemporary patterns on the wood blocks. Here you see the image uh, that are stamped on the blue fabric assembled in a textile book. And these are already this. Uh, textiles here and uh, choosing and 
book format for the representation of her um, work, the author provoked visitors to really touch the uh, artwork itself. And this kind of uh, inter interaction also creates a certain dynamic. On the one hand, uh, there uh, is an intimate feeling of um, textile tactility. And on the other hand, a common collective per perception of getting information from the uh, textile book. Uh, artist experiment by using traditional uh, method of textile making uh, refers to her conceptual vision. As she mentions uh, in the description, if the traditional uh, tablecloth gives attention to a larger story, uh, in her work she's interested in an individual ones and to give the, uh, them space for narration, as we see in, the, uh, in this project, the Book of Patterns. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, just to sum up, you know, if, uh, yeah, like following this discussion gives us a possibility to somehow travel with the textile through different times and reflect on diverse social and political topics that are connected to its production and related processes. So going beyond just the fabric and its design and integrating its production story and larger narratives, uh, can allow us to uh, talk on the topics of uh, memory, ideology, transformation, and a lot of paradoxes in it, connection of places in different times, gender, personal experience, urban space, and many, many more. Uh, we, 